Praise God, I appreciate this. Uh, I had a scripture come to me, uh, it wasn't today, it was actually a few days ago, but it's in Romans 13, um, and verse 11. This has really been on my heart. I believe the Lord brought it to me just to uh, really what Phil had uh, touched on here. And it kind of breaks into a thought here. It's about loving for the day is near. But if we start there in verse 11, it says, And do this, what we've heard this morning, do this, understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than we first believed. I'll tell you what, that's... Uh, that, that's just true. I mean, even I can see it in my own life, you know, and, and even throughout the scriptures. I mean, you look back and how near they believed that the Lord's coming was. Well, I tell you what, we don't know when the Lord's coming for us, for our soul. Praise God. I mean, it can be, it could be tomorrow. It could be five minutes from now. But praise God, we don't understand how near it is. But God, God's helping us. He's, he's showing us the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness. And you know when. One thought I had about this when he's talking about the deeds of darkness, I mean, that, that's a, uh, I don't know, you, deeds of darkness, I guess, in my mind, are things like, man, just really bad things, uh, witchcraft, stuff like this. But, you know, I tell you what, deeds of darkness is anything that idolizes itself above God. Anything that becomes a priority in our lives above Christ and what he is about, that's darkness. That, that's darkness that's instilled in our hearts. And put on, let's see, so let us put aside those things, those things that break our fellowship with Christ, and put on the armor of light. And, and the other thing I was thinking as I was reading this, let us behave decently. You know, it's not about a matter of changing our habits in ourself. We, we can't do that. It, it's a, it, it is like we heard Wednesday night, it's a renewing of our mind by God's Spirit. It is a, a you know, we can't, you know, we can start acting different, I guess, but that's not... That's not what God is getting at. It, it is changing our hearts inside, making, making our, our, uh, our desires his desires. You know, it's not, and, and when I say that, you know, it's the things that he instills in us, those things that he writes in our hearts and our lives. And uh, it just goes through some things here. Let's behave decently, not as daytime, not in orgies, drunkenness, not in sexual immorality, debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. And rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we have a will... God didn't just create us as robots. I know we've heard this, but there is a will in us. He, he has given us a, a whether we're going to serve him or whether we're, I mean, that's a daily choice that we wake up and, and make. You know, whether we're going to serve him, put our eyes upon him, but rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And I was thinking about things in that, and man, how, how driven we are by what our flesh wants and what it what it desires, you know, as far as going even to 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 our homes. I mean, things that we need. But does God not know what we need? Is He not going to take care of us? I mean, He's taking care of us this far. He's surely going to see His people out. And I just appreciate, you know, those things. Even in that, you know, our our jobs. I mean, Kylie, how many? If we were late to job, we're not going to. Uh, we're not, we're not going to make it very far. They're going to fire us pretty soon. <laughs> but thank God for his long-suffering with us. Thank God that he is causing us to wake up. He's causing us to open up our eyes or fix them on him. I just appreciate what the Lord's doing. I just thank God that, uh, you know, I just had the same thought there that uh, Phil had. It came to me a few days ago. And uh, it is, it's just a time to wake up and praise God that he's doing that. Amen. Let's turn over to Hebrews chapter 10. You know, the example there that Phil used of the microwave, I just have to confess, oftentimes mine starts earlier in the day. Uh, you go in to pray, and, and it doesn't matter what time that starts, I find myself three or four thoughts in having to say, Lord, forgive me just a second, and saying, Satan, I resist you, and may the Lord rebuke you because he just takes my thoughts, runs them down a rabbit trail, I go right back, it goes up a highway, it just, and so, and, and by the time the microwave goes out, it's like this anyway. So, you know, and I just say that, so we all fight the same battle, and it is a battle, it's a war. And, you know, there's, since I've got the computer, I'm able to really get a sampling of what, you know, goes on in the religious world, and you would almost get this feeling that, uh, 
all the churches are just going to grow and they're going to have to get bigger buildings and then campuses and then stadiums. And, but you know, you go right to the end of the scriptures and you find again and again this thought. It says, this calls for patient endurance and perseverance on the part of the saints. And I think that's true. And, and I, I know that, you know, on Sunday mornings, man, when we're all together, I sit way up here so I don't see. But when you're sitting back in there and you see all the people together and you see people worshiping and God's present in the worship service, and, and you know, Satan then, he kind of gives you some rain and you kind of run with that. And, you know, Wednesday night was such a blessing to me because Phil explained a little bit of the difference between resolutions and like what I call revelation, which is Christ in us, changing us, renewing our minds, and generating things. And, and on Sunday mornings, man, when things are running good, we make all kind of resolutions, and the devil just stays in the background. And then Monday piles in, Tuesday, you know, you pray and everything, a little of it goes away, and then Tuesday piles. And by Friday night, you know, I owe it to myself. I'm just going to stay home. And I... And I just, I just want to encourage us, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, he says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as you see the day approaching. And he says, that's the habit of some. And you know, it's so easy to form a new habit like that because our lives, buddy, they're hectic. And jobs are just, they're, they're, they're I don't, I don't, I'm not one of these old guys that say, oh man, those kids got it made. We had, we had it tough. I've never seen young guys go through what they do to hold a job anymore. I pray for you guys, but I want to encourage you because, because uh, I'll just give you an example. Friday night, it was, people say, maybe just a prayer meeting, but Dennis was here with Sheila, Sheila's husband, and that was the only service he was able to attend, and he came, and there was a good number of y'all there, and I, I, you know, I just, it was such a blessing to me, and on the way home, he and I were in the truck alone, and JP and Lauren rode home together, and he said, you know, this is the second time I've been in one of, he said, your churches. But he, 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 he said, you know, he said, he said, it doesn't matter the size of the church or the congregation. He said, in most cases, you just go and everybody's focused and, you know, the sermon or the lecture, and then you just go home. He said, here, he says, not only can I tell that your people are like a spiritual family, but he says, he says, they received me as family. I felt like I was already family before I got here. And, and I want you to know, assembling yourselves together like that, not only does it help you, you don't know who else it's going to help. I, I, I so was blessed by the prayer meeting and the fellowship. And I want to encourage us, man, as we see the day approaching, let's, let's not forsake assembling ourselves together. And that's not a, that's not a correction or a judgment. That's just... Oh God, it helps. It helps me. I, I, I need it so much. And you say, that old guy's retired. That's easy for him to say. It's still true. <laughs> and I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm thankful to be retired. I mean, as the time goes on, I see younger people don't look like they'll even get to retire. But the, 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 truth, is, the truth is still the truth. It's, it's such a blessing to be in the presence of other saints lifting their hearts to the Lord and his corporate presence being there, it just does something for us every time. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've been, I've been encouraged this morning. I'm sitting over there thinking of every reason in the world not to get up and I truly don't feel like I should be up here from a personal standpoint, but I just, I just encourage and I, and I appreciate what the Lord's saying to us. Appreciate the testimonies. It's helped me and encouraged me. It just seemed like the thing in the world was against me even getting here to church this morning. I got up late to begin with, and then as soon as I got here, I got a call and had to leave. And I said, well, by the time I get there, it'll be almost over. And I started to go by and do something else, and then, and I, and then I don't know, I, just, I guess the Lord just said, you know, doesn't matter, you're going to get there. This is more important. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe the Lord can speak to me, and he has, and I appreciate it. Uh, I just I just don't know what else to say. Uh, <clears throat> over there where Phil was reading in Isaiah, the Awake, Awake, O Zion is actually a continuation uh, from the previous chapter. For some reason, my eyes were drawn to it, and I just I, I backed up and read some of that. 
It even starts in verse 9 of 51. Awake, awake, clothe yourself with strength. O arm of the Lord, awake as in the days gone by and in generations of old. And, and then, uh, you know, then it comes on down to, uh, to verse 17. Awake, awake, rise up, O Jerusalem. You have drunk, you who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his wrath. You have drained, the, you, you who have drained to its dregs the goblet that makes men stagger. You know, in other words, this is something the Lord has done. You know, He's He's given given them, and and I'll, I'll say given us this this raft to drink. Of of all the sons she bore, there is none to guide her. Of all the sons she reared, there is none to take her by the hand. These double calamities have come upon you. Who can comfort you? Ruin and destruction, famine and sword. Who can console you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of every street like antelope caught in a net. They are filled with the raft of the Lord and rebuke of your God. In other words, God has done this. He's brought them to this place. He's brought us to this place. You know, the, the scripture says that, that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. You know, and, and I, you know, so I would assume he uh, orders the steps of a bad man too. Uh, Therefore, hear this, you afflicted one, made drunk, but not with wine. You know, being drunk with wine's bad enough, but but how many of us are drunk on other things and just just carried away with other things to the point that we don't see what's going on around us? We're not in tune. We're not able to to function as we should. This is what the sovereign Lord says: Your God, who defends His people, He defends His people. He defends each and every one of us. You know, I was thinking this morning about a problem I had that was, that was just weighing on me, and I didn't know what to do about it. You know, I prayed about it, and I thought about it, and I said, well, I'll do this, or I'll do that, and nothing seemed right, and, and the Lord just eliminated it. I mean, just boom, it was gone. He took it away. I didn't even have to do a thing. You know, it just, it just, I just had to thank him. I, you know, I thought about it this morning, you know. It happened earlier in the week, you know, but then I, for some reason I just, I was just reminded of it. This is what the sovereign Lord your sovereign Lord says, your God who defends his people. See, I have taken out of your hand the cup that made you stagger. From that cup, the goblet of my wrath, you will never drink again. Isn't that great? We don't have to we don't have to drink of that. He's gonna take it away from us. You will never drink again. I will put it in the hands of your tormentors who say to you, Fall prostrate that we may walk over you and make your back like the ground, like a street to be walked over. You ever feel like the whole world's walking over you? You know, I, I know I do sometimes. It may, you know, maybe somebody else does, I don't know. But, you know, and then, and then he goes on, awake, awake, and, and that's, that's what he's saying to us, is awake, you know, and, and I don't know if it's got anything to do with the timing of the new year or whatever, but, you know, we need to awake every day, you know, not just, not just at the new year. I don't know how many of you saw, uh, the comic strip, I think it's Heathcliff, and, and he was saying, uh, uh, this is a time when we have to examine ourselves and, and, and uh, really consider ourselves. And then he says, I'm awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're awesome in the Lord. You know, we're not awesome in ourselves, but the Lord's awesome. And he wants us to be awesome and to, and to count on him and his awesomeness. Because that's, that's the only way we can be anything is in him. Oh yeah, while I'm up here, uh, y'all pray for Billy Sue. She's really sick with, with a bad cold this morning. I appreciate it. I appreciate the Lord sharing his heart with us this morning. I believe it is the burden of his heart because he does want to, to reach people, but he's chosen to do that through us, through other people. And, and we have need of him to be full of him before we can offer anything to anybody else. And I believe that's his desire is that we be a free people, that we could be. You know, what well, we sang the song this morning, didn't we? I'm free, but I'm free for what? to be a servant of the Lord. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what our freedom is for. He wants us to be free so that we can be a servant of the Lord. I just thought about this really familiar scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, but just thought that some of the thoughts here flowed with what the Lord has said this morning to us. But 2 Corinthians 4, and just start in um, verse 3. Well, you can just start in verse 1. He says, Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. 
but rather we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the Word of God. Phil talked about needing to have His Spirit as we minister the Word. We don't want to distort the Word of God, but on the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. These are the people God wants to reach. There are people in this world whose minds have been blinded by the God of this age to the point that they don't see the gospel and they don't see their need. There are people in this building. Well, we all started there. Paul said we were all at one time, at one time we were objects of wrath. But, you know, people in this building can give testimony, just like Dawn and others here, of, of periods of their life where they've spent completely blind to their need and to the gospel. And yet God in his mercy met them and made them aware of the need, and he did something for them. But I tell you what, that was a result of prayers of, of, that were going up. And it was a result of people who were interested in, in crying out to God on their behalf. These are the people God wants us to be free so that we can reach for him. And that's what he says here. We do not preach ourselves. Praise God. I'm glad that's not our message. <laughs> Because out of that wouldn't be much of a message. I'd say, Lord, just made me conscious of it coming in this morning, thinking about the song service. I just said to say, Lord, I'm so glad that it, it's not about me. <laughs> you said it's not about us. It's not about us. And I'm glad. Because that one thing I know coming in here this morning is you are worthy of praise. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what's going on with me, because there's plenty wrong there. But it doesn't change the fact that you are worthy of praise. That our message is not ourselves, praise God. But it's Jesus Christ as Lord. That's the message people need to hear. These who have their minds blinded, who don't see the need, that's the message they need to hear is that Jesus Christ is Lord. We don't preach ourselves. We preach Jesus Christ as Lord. But you see, it doesn't stop there. There's not a period there. It's not just Jesus is Lord. There's something that goes with that. Jesus is Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. See, we're part of that process. It's not just Jesus off in the sky as Lord, but he's called a people so that we can be servants for the sake of others, for the sake of his people. That's what he wants us to be free for. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness. So that's his purpose. He wants the light to shine into the darkness. So how does that happen? He made his light to shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So God's purpose is for light to shine into darkness, to show people their need. But he shined that light into our hearts. He's given us that light. The way that's going to be accomplished is that it comes from here out to others, to one another. That's, that's why we need to be free, so we can have the privilege of being his light. That's what he told the disciples. You're the light of the world. Well, that's our privilege, is to be the light of the world. But here's the issue we battle. Here's where we get where Phil was talking about. But we had this treasure in jars of clay. But it's to show that this all-surpassing power is from God is not from us. And we are hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, and persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. I believe God would encourage us this morning that as we acknowledge the fact that maybe we're persecuted, maybe we're confused, maybe we're, you know, struck down, we need to quote the other side of that scripture. We're not destroyed. We're not abandoned. I think what Margaret said this morning, yeah, there's difficulties, but we're not destroyed. We're not consumed. That's not the end of the story. And I think it does us good to confess that and to, to give testimony to that. Because there's a reason for this. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, but it's so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. And I believe he would have us not be discouraged about the fact that death has to work here so that life can come out. So that we can be free and not give up when that process happens and just say, well, something must be wrong. No, that's the process. That's the way it happens. That's the way we're made free to be a servant of the Lord. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. And with that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All of this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Praise God. That's the joy that's set before us. You know, the scripture talks about Jesus did what he did and endured what he endured for the joy that was set before him. Well, we're not called to go to the cross and die for the sins of the world, but we do have a calling and a ministry. And we do our ministry for the same reason he did, because there's a joy that is set before us. There's a privilege to be the light of the world and to be able to be a part of somebody else being set free. Somebody else being encouraged when they're weak or, or helped or strengthened when they're down. Or somebody having their eyes opened who was in this state where they were blind and they couldn't even see the light of the gospel. We have the privilege to be a part of that. I thank him. It's worth 
letting him work in us that we could be a part of that. And I believe that's what he's showing us. Therefore, for, that, for this very reason, because of this, we don't lose heart. Even though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Praise God. How many, how many things will there be on that day at times we, maybe we didn't even know that we were able to help somebody else or maybe even be part of bringing somebody to the Lord? That's an eternal glory. <laughs> you know, what the Lord does, He does forever. I, I tell you what, it's amazing to think that we can be a part of something that's eternal, but we have that privilege. And, and, it, and, it's, and when we get on that to that day and we look back, whatever we, we labored, whatever we, whatever we had to die to make that happen, it's going to seem just like what he said here, light and momentary. It's going to seem like it was nothing to accomplish the purpose of God and to see his purpose fulfilled. I, I just thank him this morning. I thank him for making us part of something that is so much bigger than us <laughs> and giving us a hope and a joy that we can walk in that with him. And I just thank him. I thank him for the encouragement, testimonies of answered prayer, to know just to keep persevering. No matter what we feel, if we feel hard-pressed and persecuted and struck down, well, praise God, that's part of it. But we're not destroyed and we're not forsaken and we're not abandoned because he's with us. I just thank him for the hope he gives us this morning.